In this lesson, we'll shift our attention to our character's legs and begin to add color to them. All right, great. So at this point, we are still kind of continuing on with the skin tones, and uh, we're going to skip the hands for right now. We'll wrap up with those, but we've got these um, these sections of her legs that still need to be colored. So um, let's go ahead and jump over here and bring in our shadows and highlights. And I've gone ahead and just like we did with the face, I've penciled in where I think some highlights and some shadows are going to be, and even a few of the midtones. So um, with that in place, we can come in here. And again, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my Copic medium broad nib. And let's come over here. Maybe make that a little larger, figure out what our highlights are going to look like. I believe we used this for the highlight color at first, so uh, we're going to treat this the exact same way. We're going to come in and just kind of block in the areas of highlight, making sure we get a nice solid coat uh, of that color there. Now, depending on the style of color you're going for, you may actually even use white as a highlight. Now, uh, white is obviously the brightest highlight you can get, so I kind of, it's my personal preference never to use white as a highlight, um, unless it's um, just sort of just a, a really sharp reflection off of a metallic surface. So, uh, when it comes to things like skin, I'm never going to use white as a highlight. So, um, let's come in here and just kind of paint that in really quickly. I'll just pan over to the side and kind of think about maybe the next color for us to add. So uh, again, working on the exact same skin layer, and I'm going to come in here and just begin to sort of block in some additional color. That may have been a step, uh, a, a step quick, if you will. I may have uh, jumped in a little dark a little quickly, but I think we can still make this work. Her leg looks a little bit orange to me. Uh, as a matter of fact, if we come in and hide that, yeah, it looks a bit orange, but we can fix that. So uh, we'll just actually come in here and work on the other leg as well. And for this leg, I'm going to make sure and just kind of not hit necessarily these orange areas with the full intensity of this marker. Maybe leave a little bit uh, of transparency there. come in like so roughly block in those leg colors all right fantastic so um, at this point we uh, you know we spent a lot of time on the face We've, we when we ultimately started with probably the most important feature on this character is her face we want that to draw attention before anything else so um, I think that it would be safe to say that uh, we probably don't want to um, shift the, the viewer's attention to her legs rather than her face. So we probably won't spend quite as much time on the legs of the character. We'll come over here and you can see here how I've kind of planned for a little bit of a shadow being cast from the skirt. And let's come back over here. They start to fill some of this in. Let me go ahead and hide that. Fantastic. So again, really, essentially what we're doing at this point is laying down the base color for, uh, for the legs. In very similar fashion that we did with the, uh, uh, with the face. Now we can always uh, go ahead and switch over to the eraser tool uh, and use that as our swap brush uh, if we want to come in here and maybe clean up the edges as we go. But uh, ultimately, it's really pretty early to d even think about doing that. So uh, we're just going to kind of work to get as far as we can here on these legs in this lesson. Uh, let's try that one there. So a lot of times, really, when it comes down to it, it's a matter of experimentation um, in terms of what colors are going to work best where. So uh, let's come in here and start to blend a little bit. Considering that light source is directly overhead, um, we're probably going to have kind of a sharp shadow from the skirt um, as opposed to... You know, maybe some more diffused highlights the further down we get. Um, if they're kind of steering away from that light source, they may 
sort of feather. All right, great. I'll just come over here and clean off my blender. And fantastic. So um, you can see here how that colorless blender really makes quick work of blending a lot of these hues together. So um, now that's a fairly solid base that we've established here for the legs. And you can see that I even started on this leg on screen right to uh, incorporate some purples into that. So um, thinking about where our light source is, um, that's probably something we would want to do more of. So uh, I'm going to switch back over to my medium broad nib and let's go ahead and just maybe bring some purples in over here as well if we need to reference kind of our shadows and highlights layer we can always do that but at, at you know some point that's eventually going to sort of get in the way let's come over here and try this pink instead there we go So when I'm working with the markers, you can obviously tell that having your brush properties open is, is a pretty important thing. Um, you can see that I, I'm constantly reaching over and grabbing my colorless blender. And really, you don't even have to click the box. You can just click on the text right there, which is pretty nice. We'll come in here. So kind of the philosophy I'm using here is cooler shadows, uh, warmer highlights. Um, typically it's going to be one or the other. If you have cooler highlights, then your shadows could be warmer. Uh, really just kind of depends on how realistic of lighting that you're wanting to uh, paint on the character you're working on. So um, let's come over here and... Just shrink this down, see if we can get this small enough to maybe come in and add some of these drop shadows. If I remember, yep, I definitely did have one there. Now if we need to, we can always rotate the canvas by holding the space bar down, just like so. That'll give us a little better angle to maybe come in and uh, draw sort of that arc right there without having to switch over to steady stroke. And we'll do the same thing over here. All right, great. Now, ultimately, that's actually probably a little dark, a little fast, so we may actually want to come in and sort of blend that just a little bit. Just like so. Sort of soften that shadow up some. It's also pretty saturated for a shadow. So you can see really how working with these, uh, these oil-based Copic markers really forces you to think about the colors you apply before you add them in. So uh, we probably should have gone with maybe a color more like that instead. But, you know, it's not too late. We can come in and start to kind of integrate that in and uh, really kind of desaturate that shadow some. All right, so we don't want to get too carried away with these shadows here. I'm going to kind of bounce around the legs a little bit more here uh, for just for a little bit longer. And let's come in here. Think about maybe this shadow up here. Again, probably don't want to use that one. Let's come in and start with maybe something like this. Uh, that's going to be kind of hard to see. Maybe we go with this one. So we'll just come over here. Let's make that brush a bit larger. Start to think about that shadow some. Just 
just like so. And again, we can always switch over to our eraser if we need to clean up the skirt just a little bit to get a better idea of where that shadow is. You can see periodically I'll come in here and just sort of clean the edges uh, just so I can get a, a fairly good idea of what that shadow is starting to look like. So um, in this lesson, we have really started to add sort of a base layer of uh, color and value to the legs. Um, I want to spend one more lesson working on the legs. So uh, in the next lesson, we'll pick up where we're leaving off here.